welcome to a web of stories my name is melinda and today i'm going to do something a little different i am filming this on february 14th which is valentine's day i don't know if you can see it but i'm wearing my valentine's day shirt <laughs> but i'm not going to talk about valentine's day because it's not just valentine's day here it is also uh, my state of oregon's 164th birthday oregon became a state on february 14th 1859 and because of that i'm going to do a bookish oregon video so um i i was actually born not in oregon <laughs> but my father's a native oregonian and he was in the military so um, i was born elsewhere and then i moved to oregon with my family when my father retired from the military when i was just a year old and i lived here until i went to college um on the east coast and then I came back for a couple years and then I moved to Boston to work for a couple years. And then I made the decision to come back to Oregon and be a true Oregonian. And I've been here ever since. Um, I love the state. I have told people it's probably the only state I can live in for various reasons. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Oregon, it is gorgeous. We have um, probably all every ecosystem you can think of. We have the ocean, we have the mountains, we have rainforests, we have deserts, we have canyons, <laughs> we have everything. Whatever you want, it is in Oregon. Now I live um, outside of Portland, Oregon, and Portland is the largest city. It is not the capital. That's Salem, Oregon, which is actually where I grew up. But um, Oregon is actually a very bookish state. Um, and I don't think people really realize that. One of the signs that Oregon is so bookish is if you come to Portland as a tourist, the number one tourist attraction in Portland is Powell's World of Books, which is the largest independent bookstore in the country. It is in a city block. Um, well, the main store is a city block and it's, it's fantastic. There's nothing else like it. And if you ever do come to Portland, you need to go to Powell's. Powell's also has, it's kind of like a local chain now. And so my local indie is also Powell's, but it's the one um, that's on the west, the west suburbs. But they have, there's like a Powell's that's just cookbooks. There's a technical one. There's another sort of satellite store, which is on the east side. There's even in the small town of Condon, Oregon, there's a general store. And in the corner of the general store is a little Powell's bookstore. <laughs> so uh, Oregon's also home to a number of authors. And I wanted to share them with you. And I think that these names will probably be familiar to you. So I'm going to start by sharing some of the notable authors from the state of Oregon, and then I'm going to share three more authors and a book that each of them have put out that I think is just a really Oregonian-ish book. It captures the spirit of Oregon beautifully. So I think that there's like three legends of Oregon literature. And um, I'm going to address one of them in the second part of this video, but the two I wanted to start with were Ken Casey and Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, sadly, I have not read either one of those authors, although I'm going to change that this year. So Ken Casey's most famous book is probably One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is set in my hometown of Salem, Oregon. So the fact that I haven't read that yet is even more ridiculous. Um, if you have read the book, you know it takes place in a, in a mental hospital. It's the state hospital that still exists. It is still, um, it's still there. It is the, it is actually, the movie was filmed there as well. Um, the campus is, is large and it's unchanged, but the actual hospital part has gotten much smaller. They now have um, other offices there. There's a museum about uh, mental health care in Oregon there. So it, it's changed a bit, but it is still there. Um, I do have a copy of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest on my Kobo, and I do plan to read that at some point this year. And Ursula Le Guin is an author who's kind of scared me because she's always been like science fiction. Um, and I, I'm not always sure that I read science fiction, although I have read it and enjoy it. So I think it's something I need to go over. But um, a couple weeks ago, I was speaking with a friend of mine who's read a lot of Le Guin. And we were kind of talking over it, and she really made Le Guin's work sound like something that I would appreciate. And she gave me a few tips on where to start. So I do have a plan this year to start reading Ursula Le Guin. So now I'm gonna talk about five more authors and I am sure you've all heard of all of these. And I'm gonna start with this guy. I can't pronounce his name. I have heard him pronounce it and I can't even repeat it back properly. So I'm just gonna put his name there. You know who this is. 
This is the guy who wrote Fight, who wrote Fight Club. I have actually not read his work. Um, I take that back. I have read some essays he's done, but I haven't read any of his novels. But he is an active writer living in Portland. Um, he's well known. He's uh, he is very he's an author who people know, and I think they associate him with Oregon. The next author is a woman named Jane Kirkpatrick. Um, this is the one that's probably least known of these five. She writes like very wholesome pioneer novels. I believe her publisher, her publisher was, and I believe the publisher still is, um, a Christian publisher. Although the books that I've read of hers are not overtly religious or preachy. Um, they're just kind of wholesome pioneer novels. <laughs> but they're very popular. Um, I have a friend who loves her books, and I even I had the opportunity to go to a book signing for her. So for my friend's birthday, I got her a signed copy of one of her books. But Jane Kirkpatrick is a very popular author here, and she lives, I don't, I believe she lives in Eastern Oregon. Um, that's where most of her books take place. This author I'm going to talk about has become very famous in the last, I don't know, 15, 10, 10 15 years, and that is Cheryl Strayed. She's probably most famous for her memoir, Wild, which uh, is about her doing part of the Pacific Crest Trail when she was in her 20s. I know this book, so people love or hate this book. I mean, people just have strong feelings about this book. I personally really enjoyed it because I get some sort of pleasure about reading people who are just complete hot messes. And she was the hottest of all messes in that book. Um, but I also know people who hated it. Um, but I think that my favorite book of hers is Tiny Beautiful Things, which is a collection of the advice columns she wrote as Dear Sugar in the Rumpus. Believe it or not, <laughs> this has been turned into a stage play. I say that because you wouldn't think that advice columns would make a good play, um, but it is a very good play. It's written, the play is written by Nia Vardolis, who has done the big, my big fat Greek wedding movies. And she was the original star of the show the first time it was um, performed, I believe. I was able to see, um, tiny beautiful things at Portland Center Stage before the pandemic and it was wonderful. If you ever get a chance to see the stage production, please do. It is worth it. It's also being turned into a tel television series on Hulu. Um, it'll be airing in April and it stars Katherine Hahn. It is not a television series of the play. I mean the play and the television series are different but they're both based on this. Um, if you've never read Cheryl Strayed, start with this. <laughs> because I know so many people who refuse to read Tiny Beautiful Things because they hated Wild, and um, that kind of breaks my heart because I think they would really love Tiny Beautiful Things. Um, and I think if you've read Tiny Beautiful Things, you will probably have more understanding about what Cheryl Strayed was going through in her experience that she recounts in Wild. The next author is one that I've read one book of. Oh, she's a middle grade and young adult author, and that's Renee Watson. She, um, the book that I've read is called Piecing Me Together, which is a very lovely young adult book about an African-American um, young woman, a teenager um, in Portland, just trying to find her way in the world. She also has a series, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the series, um, but it's, it's for younger kids. And I gave a copy of it to, I will put the name of the series down here. Um, I gave a copy of it to a friend's daughter once and they said it was absolutely wonderful and they want to keep reading on it. So Depending on the age of your kiddo, you know, Ray, Renee Watson might be a book that you might want to um, introduce, an author you might want to introduce them to. She, um, as an African-American, she gives a really unique view on Portland because Portland, unfortunately, um, is not known for having a large African-American population. We, we're not completely white, <laughs> but, but um, as far as big cities go, we are probably less diverse than a lot of them. So I really enjoyed reading Renee, reading, seeing Portland through Renee Watson's eyes in that book. And this last author in this part is one I was completely surprised to find out that he um, was from Oregon. And that is TJ Klune. Um, the first book of his I read was The House on the Cerulean Sea, which I know so many people have read. Uh, it's a wonderful book. And if you haven't read it, go read it. Um, but it's a very British feeling book. Like it just, it just seemed British when I read the book, all the characters had British accents and everything. And I read it for a book club and I went to get information on the author to prepare for the book club. And I was convinced he was from England because this felt like a book that was for someone from England. 
and he's from Roseburg, Oregon. I was completely shocked. Um, Roseburg is a smaller city in Southern Oregon. Um, it's on the Rogue River. If you ever go to Roseburg, stay at the Holiday Inn Express because every room has a view of the river. Little tip there. Um, but I was completely surprised by it. But he's, he's an author who's really up and coming right now. I know a lot of people really love his books. I've enjoyed the books of his that I've read. And I'm still kind of surprised that he's an Oregonian author. And I want to talk about three books that I feel really kind of capture Oregon. And when I started this, I talked about like the three legends of Oregon literature. Um, and I said that there were two of them and I would talk about the third one. The third one is probably I, I know i shouldn't say probably it is the one that i'm sure everyone who has seen this video has read um, i don't know anybody who made it through, through school without reading this author or without having this author read to them and that is beverly cleary um, i read all of her books well i read all of her books that were out when i was growing up i actually sort of aged out of her books before she finished reading so then when my daughter came along and i was reading her books to them there were a couple of her books that had come out since I kind of aged out and I hadn't read them yet. Specifically, I think the last two Ramona books. So that was really fun to be able to experience that for the first time with her. Um, and I would recommend any of her books, but this video I'm particularly recommending Emily's Runaway Imagination. So this is about a, a girl named Emily uh, growing up at the turn of the 20th century <laughs> um, in a town called Pitchfork, Oregon. Uh, it's a fictional town, but this book is based very heavily on Beverly Cleary's own childhood of growing up in Yamhill and McMinnville, Oregon. I read this as a kid, and, um, you know, Ramona is the one everyone remembers, but I remember some scenes from this book very vividly. Uh, one, and I, but I couldn't put them with a book, if that makes any sense. Um, so it was fun to rediscover going, oh, yes, I love this book when I read it to my daughter. The one scene that really sticks in my mind, which I think is hilarious now as an adult, I was kind of scandalized by it as a kid, is there's a scene where Emily feeds the pigs on their farm like rotten apples and the apples have started to ferment. So all the all the pigs get drunk and they ruin her mother's like garden party, which I thought was hilarious. Now I feel like that to me is great comedy. As a kid, I was like, oh, no, she got the, the, the pigs drunk. But as I said, I'm sure everybody has read Beverly Cleary, but there you go. And if you have kids and they haven't read Beverly Cleary, introduce them to her because she is wonderful. And she is probably the most famous author from Portland, from Oregon. She is from born in Yamhill, grew up in McMinnville, lived as an adult in Portland. So, so the next book, excuse me, the next book is one that a friend of mine gave me and it is the most Portland book ever. And it is, Wildwood by Colin Malloy. Uh, Colin Malloy is the lead singer of The Decemberist, but he is also, <laughs> Lily loves this book, he is also an author. And his wife, Carson Ellis, did the illustrations in this book. Um, this book is so, it's so Portland. Uh, the setup is there is a girl named Prue who is at the park with her little brother. And all of a sudden, a murder of crows comes and kidnaps her brother and takes him into this area called the Impassable Wilderness. The Impassable Wilderness is Forest Park, which is a park in Portland. And it's a big, huge forest and there's trails and everywhere. But in this book, it's a magical land with um, talking animals and Scottish brigands and English ivy that sucks human blood. And uh, everyone thinks that, I mean, I can tell if someone's from Portland or not, because they'll think it's weird that English ivy like sucks human blood. But if you're from Oregon, you're like, no, no, it, it, I totally would buy that. But <laughs> this is the first book in a trilogy. I've only read the first book, but I have the other two kind of right here behind me on my to be our bookshelf, to be read bookshelf. And so I will be getting to them. My one piece of advice on this one, do not get the audiobook unless they've done a new version of the audiobook. But when I got the audiobook, to listen to with my kids but just I couldn't I couldn't with the narrator the narrator was horrible <laughs> but um so if you're interested in the audiobook look at the copyright if it's done within the last five years it's probably fine there's probably a newer version but if it's the original version just just read the book plus you get to see all the wonderful um I mean it's not super you know there's some illustrations in it but this was a really fun book um 
and I could not wait to read it to my kids. And my daughter, when I just said that she's over there, she got all excited. So Wildwood. And finally, I have a book that I have mentioned in my weekly reads. Um, I'm not actually done with this book yet, but this book captures a part of Oregon better than any book I've ever read. And that is Mink River by Brian Doyle. And I am about halfway through it. So Mink River, or this is about a fictional town on the Oregon coast. The town is fictional. They say about where it is. So in my mind, I see the towns that exist in reality about where that is. And it's, it captures the environment and everything perfectly. There are a number of townspeople we follow in this. Mainly it's two families. There's like, well, mainly it's one family, maybe two. It's hard to tell, <laughs> but it, there's, there's two sorts of people shall we say that it deals with. There's um, some um, indigenous people. I'm not sure what tribe, they never say what tribe they are. My guess is they would be Selets. I think that's the tribe, or um, maybe uh, whatever the one was up in Astoria, because this is just south of Astoria. I'll have to look that up. I'll put it down here. <laughs> um, and then there's also um, some Irish people. And um, most of the characters are Irish American, like descended from Irish people who came and settled, but there is one character who is from Ireland. So there's a lot about Irish culture in here as well. Um, the author's name is Brian Doyle. The guy's Irish. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> Although he, he was from Portland. He has passed on. Um, this book is just beauty on the page. It's lyrical. It's, it, it, you know, these, these characters, it brings these characters to life in such an amazing way. All the characters are fascinating. I love this book and the fact that I'm talking about this with still half the book to go should say something. But um, as I said in my last weekly wrap up book, I highly recommend this one, but it is a small press book. So if you are not in the Pacific Northwest or even in Oregon, you may not find this in a bookstore, but it is in print and you can get it um, through an online really retailer like um, bookshop.org. So there you go. I hope this like opens your eyes to some Oregon writers. Um, I love my state. I love the writers here. And um, I thank you for letting me share this with you. And uh, if you have any questions or you have anything you want to say about Oregon or whatever, please let me know in the comments below and like this video and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.